Hello, my name is Sue Lewis and I'm going to be talking about the Career Pilot Pathway Planner. So I'm going to show you how we developed this model through a national bid to the Careers and Enterprise Company. And it's a model that helps you to provide effective guidance to meet the individual needs at three different levels by using a triage model. So this helps with Gatsby 8 and also Gatsby 3. So when we bid to the Careers and Enterprise Company, we had to show how our model would meet the requirements of Gatsby 8 and also how our model would hit the criteria of effective personal guidance that comes from a research report the Chris and Enterprise Company wrote called Personal Guidance, What Works. So our model very much connects with these particular attributes. We also needed to ensure that whoever was delivering guidance was level six trained and we do deliver that award through Career Pilot. So in each of our six pilot schools, we train somebody up to the level six diploma in careers guidance. So before we bid to the Careers and Enterprise Company, we already had Career Pilot, which has been going since 2011. And Career Pilot is a whole suite of tools, a student zone, reporting, advisor and parent zone. And within Career Pilot, there's a progressive programme for every year group, five week PSHE programmes for every year group. So it really helps to actually put a stable careers programme together, which of course is Gatsby 1. Behind Career Pilot, we're all trained careers guidance advisors, ex-teachers, ex-careers leaders. We were also an award-winning website in 2018. The website got an award from the Career Development Institute. So in the south of England, Career Pilot is funded through 20 universities and six UniConnect projects, all pay subscriptions. That enables the site to be free to schools and colleges in our region. You can, however, subscribe to Career Pilot if you're outside our region, and that is through an annual subscription. So we bid to the Careers and Enterprise Company and an investment fund called Personal Guidance and we had to think of a new way of delivering personal guidance. So our model was, based on some work we've been doing already, was to offer a whole school approach to personal guidance using triage and that is something we piloted with six schools and that has now become called the Career Pilot Pathway Planner. So why did we develop a triage model? Well, through our experience of working um, closely with students in some um, UniConnect schools, we knew that some students do know their choices and do have a clear plan. It was just sometimes about checking the plan and giving them any support that they might need additionally. The challenge was to find out who were the students who did have that good plan and who were the ones who need that additional support. We also found that advisors were saying the same things to many students. So when they came to guidance, they didn't necessarily know all their options. So the conversation would be a lot about the different options available to them. Some of that information could have been done beforehand, which would ensure that all the students had the same information. You could kind of start from there as an advisor. We also want a careers guidance to be part of a, a process and be part of a school, whole school model too, rather than actually in a little room somewhere. So we felt that we wanted stages like a pre-guidance, preparation for guidance session, then guidance and then follow up. And that's what our model is based on. And we wanted really to give guidance time to students according to their need, not just once, they might need it more than once, but according to the needs of students. So we wanted a tool that would actually help us to find out what the needs of students were. And, you know, it was about trying to provide guidance in a strategic way rather than what in some schools was quite ad hoc. It was if the enthusiasm of a te tutor might mean they were referred for guidance if they put a premium or particular target students, they often were. But it was not very strategic sometimes, so we wanted to see if we could address some aspects of that. So I'm not going to show you the whole of Career Pilot because there's no time for that, but just to say Career Pilot is a one-stop careers website, as I said, put together by careers advisors and, and ex-teachers. And in the site, this is open access, anybody can use that. But if you're one of our subscribing schools, then students can register themselves and they can use our career tools. And that means they can personalise their choices as they use the site. So they can put in my job sectors, my courses. And that creates a report for them to view and that moves up to them manually. And that data can be used through the reporting zone so you can find out, for example, what job sectors the whole of year 11 are interested in. So you could target your encounters according to the needs of students. There's also access to the advisor zone and the parent zone from this one place. 
We've got what we call our popular tools, job profiles, lots of labour market information on them, course and apprenticeship search, provider search, qualification ladder, they can plot their route, and over a thousand video stories all linked into qualifications and jobs. And because we're careers advisors, we wanted to give students a process they could keep returning to whenever they made a careers decision. So this is a classic decision maker process. Start with you, explore your options, plan your next steps. And a lot of our resources are structured under these three sections. But the students often want to know about particular qualifications, so they could click on one of those and there'll be information and advice to help them move on. And because we're completely impartial, not for profit, we can curate other good quality free websites on behalf of students, so we'll link off where it seems appropriate. So that's career pilot in an overview. Just to say to the report I mentioned earlier, um, it can be quite detailed and even before we bid to the CEC, we were using this report to inform our guidance practice because you could look and see what students were saying they were interested in and then pick up on that through the guidance situation. You can also report, record your report straight onto Career Palette so it's visible to the student and anybody else who's got access to that student through your school. And that moves up annually. They own the account, they can port it into different providers like a college for example. So based on all that, we had our, um, we've been doing lots of guidance in schools anyway. So we developed this model that we proposed to the CEC and we were successful in our bid and we piloted it with six schools. They did it with 60 year 11s and 40 year 12s in each school and now they're only arrived right across the year group and it is now available to other schools. So it starts with a pre-guidance session. Now we know schools do all sorts of things to prepare kids for option choices. But at one particular occasion, there will be a pre-guidance session, which will be in an IT room. They'll be introduced to all the different options available to them. So if it's year 11, it's about post 16. If it's year 12, about post 18. And then they have some time to explore the ones they're interested in on Career Pilot. And then right at the end of that session, it doesn't take about five, 10 minutes, they'll do our pathway planner. So this is an electronic tool. It asks them which pathway they're interested in, having spent quite a bit of time now talking about them. And then they do through a quiz format, they answer some questions about each of the ones they're interested in. That gives them a red, amber, green score, showing how ready they are for their future pathway. That data can be used by careers leaders and guidance advisors in order to allocate guidance according to three different levels of need. Career Pilot will be used during guidance because there's lots of really great information tools there. The report will be recorded on Career Pilot and then three or four weeks later be followed up by a tutor or head of six who would ask three questions, take about five minutes and on the basis of that if they were at all concerned about the students they could put them back into other forms of guidance. So in addition to the one-to-one -one, we had w at least one lunchtime week of drop-in, e-guidance so students could request an e-guidance uh, ask a question online, they could self-refer, but also tutors could refer them back into guidance um, if they were concerned about them. So as I said before, this helps with Gatsby 8 and Gatsby 3. So I'm just going to run you through how this looks. So to start, as I said, with a structured presentation, we designed them, schools could deliver them or adapt them. This is the one for year 12, I'm not going to go through it all. Uh, so we would take the students through the options, they have a fun starter, and then they'd have some time on Career Palette. We also developed an animated video to help students understand how they could manage their own careers in quite a kind of fun way, so like a three minute video, but showing how all the other people are here to help. We also wanted to raise awareness about the role of guidance as well and how important it was. So in our video, we've got four key things. Know yourself, do stuff to build your CV, know all your options and use your supporters. So in our presentation, we'll take them through particular things they'd be doing to help them with those particular things with a, with a focus on knowing all your options. So having gone through those options, then they would have some time on Career Pilot and they'd be directed to do certain things. Start with the subject, to help them think about where a subject might lead, sample, in, sample jobs and courses um, from each, for each subject. A skills map will help recognise what skills they've got already and what they could be building up to uh, closely align with the job or course they might be interested in. Explore your options, they could do that by age, what my options at a particular age, 18 or 16. They could look at jobs or courses, apprenticeship vacancies. They'd have some time to explore the site about 30 minutes. And then right at the end, we'd explain about the pathway planner. So this is a way for you now to think about the pathways you're interested in, all can be changed and then actually do a little quiz and that will help them to know whether they how ready they were for their pathway but also help us to get information so we could help them 
So the pathway plan doesn't take very long for students to do. They get shown the pathways that are open to them. So there's a different version for um, pre-16. This is the post-16 post pathway. So they have to say, well, they're definitely considering not doing. And if they're not considering anything, that would show up as a red flag. And they're reaching a definite or considering they do a quiz. So it's really a set of questions about that particular pathway. I know what course subject I want to apply for. Yes, think so, no. And behind this, uh, we know that some of these are red flag questions. So the students don't see the score in, but what they get is a red, amber, green score showing how ready they are for each of the pathways that they're interested in. So this student is definite by university level study, but they're amber. So that would indicate there's some gaps in their knowledge or there's something that you know they're not quite ready for. Uh, they're also considering apprenticeships, but they're read for that, so there might be quite a few things that they don't know about that pathway. So when we decide who's going to get what level of guidance, we do go for definite as top trumps, and then in the guidance we'd pick up on anything else they might be considering. So everybody's going to get guidance, which was obviously part of Gatsby 8, um, and for our model, in our pilot, if they were green, they had a 20-minute check of their plan. If they were amber, they had a 30 minute session. And if they were additional needs, thinking about apprenticeship or read for their definite pathway, they got a 60 minute um, session. There's a few other things the students can do from here and I will actually mention these as we go through. There's a timeline, which I'll show you, but they could also, after their first guidance session was set up, they could request other guidance. So if they were still worried in a few weeks time after guidance, they could request and come to a drop in. So what I've shown you there are the, is the student area. And what I'm going to show you is how it looks from a staff area, from the staff area, from our reporting zone. So if you're a pathway planner school, this particular bit is switched on for you. So you can see the results and make bookings. So here now I've got a particular group, it might be a tutor group or a whole new group. There's different ways you can set that up. And here, if the 11 students had done it, it would be here, but these students are just post 16. So there are various things I can do. One thing I can see already is that this student has got an A around them, which means they've got additional needs. So that student, irrespective of what they're shown in the pathway, will get the longest um, guidance session. But if we look across, what you can then begin to look at is what sort of guidance you might give a student. So for example, the top student sample 3000, they're considering two pathways. They seem to be pretty well informed about one, amber about the other. Because they're not definite by any pathway, it probably would give them an amber session. So you would use other information too. You'd be using grade information. Because if, for example, somebody does want to go to university, but you know they haven't got the right grade profile, then you might want to give them a longer session so that they can actually uh, look at that in a bit more detail. The other thing you do is perform particular actions. So there's a whole range of things you can do here. You can view the answers to the questions. Now, what some schools are doing are looking at the answers for a lot of um, students and seeing that there are similar issues and they've been doing group sessions about that particular thing. Maybe it's about funding for higher education. They still get a small into individual session as well. But that was a way of actually making sure those students got the key information they needed. You can also view their timeline, which I've mentioned a few times, which I'll show you in a minute. You can book guidance from here. You can record a sort of summary of where they are after guidance, which is the follow-up. And teachers follow-up show, shows here, and also you can add advisor comments from here as well. Um, if you've got any guidance booked, uh, it'll show here. If it's pink, it means you've done it. If it's green, it's sort of coming up. So you can see a lot from this particular page. So as I said, you can make bookings, you can call it whatever, CC Lewis, room 305 for a career session, wherever you call it in your school, put the date, the time, and then you can identify what sort of session you're setting up for the students, long, medium, or check-in. If they drop in, you can record that as well, so everything shows in one system. You can look at all the bookings, you can sort them by types or alphabetical order. Another thing you could do is put did not attend and that will show on the student's timeline as well. So that's quite useful to show them really. Okay, so the timeline I mentioned a few times. You can see this as a student and also from the staff area as well. So what this shows is on a particular date, 
where the students were when they did the pathway planner. So for example, 28th of November, the student was two reds in number. Then they had an intervention, they had a long careers guidance session. And then they got to do the pathway planner again, just edit their answers. And you could see they're moving now to green and number. So the idea is they're always moving to being in a position where they, they understand about their progression, so they're ready for it um, before they get their results. And they have a plan B set up, hopefully, too. So what you can do as a guidance advisor, you can write a little summary uh, on each student as they sort of leave your guidance. You can put your own little line. The students don't see this, but you might be saying, yeah, they're definitely by A-levels, they're interested in these subjects, and they are likely to get those grades. And you can put more than one pathway on, too. Tutors, what we want tutors to do is not become careers experts. We want them to just ask three questions that would help them to see whether their students need additional support and give the students an opportunity to answer that question. So train the tutors takes about 20 minutes and then the tutors take about five minutes with students. They have got access to their career pilot records so they could look at their tutor group in detail if they want to. But mainly we want them to ask, are you clear about which pathway? How are you getting on with your actions? Do you feel you have the information you need to move on? And if they're at all concerned, if it's just missing an action point, we wouldn't refer them. But for some of the other things, they can refer them back into guidance and then they'll be picked up by the guidance advisor. We were worried about asking tutors to do this because you know how busy they are. But this is quite typical of the feedback we got from tutors. So tutors, all they have to do is, like I say, they can access the data so they can see what choices the students are interested in. Then they look at the advisor report if they want to, but mainly they have to just put, they've done the follow-up and whether they feel that student needs to be referred back in. And that would be for a drop-in, it wouldn't be for a full session, but they could come back in for drop-in in the lunchtime. So the progression follow-up report, this is the one-liner from the advisor after guidance, would be here and you can see the tutor information goes in there too. So as a guidance advisor you could see which students the tutors suggest we sort of get along for a drop-in session. So we were interested to know how students responded to the different levels of guidance because it was a new way of doing things. Um, in the past in lots of schools everybody got the same or sometimes people had different people doing guidance because there wasn't enough guidance advisors. So what we had is a questionnaire for each of the groups, which was quite similar. So if you had green guidance, you did one questionnaire, amber, another. And what you can see in terms of that question, overall, how useful has the careers guidance session been to you? There's not a great difference between the different levels of guidance. Out of five, 4.4, 4.4, 4.6. We also asked how was the timing of the guidance session and you could see for more than 80% it was long enough. And if they came to you and it wasn't long enough, you could pop them back in for drop in uh, anyway. So it wasn't, that was the end of it. Uh, and interestingly, 15% of the Reds said it wasn't long enough, they'd had no hour. So, you know, sometimes it's done to obviously the individual students' needs. So we have had a research project run alongside what we've been doing um, so you can access anything to do with the project from our tile and our advisor zone and that's called the Koreans and Enterprise Company bid and there you'll find all our case studies, one from each of our schools and an overview case study um, which concentrate on different aspects of implementation. There's a research report from Ali Ransfield Swales who did our research and that's an example of the case studies, for example. And you can see examples of the evaluation surveys we use at the end of each guidance. So you just see the sort of questions we were asking students. This is a nice quote. I have got loads of nice quotes, in fact. Um, but this is the sort of thing we had hoped to achieve through um, this model. So if you're interested in the Pathway pl Planner, it is available to schools now. That is a charge because it is like an additional service for us to provide. Um, if you're in the south of England, you know, fortunately for you, you can access our early adopters rate of £249, which is a one-off cost. Uh, that's only available to December the 18th and things will change after that. If you're outside of the south of England, then it is £250 per annum. Um, if you are external, you will need to subscribe to Career Pilot first in order to have the Pathway Planner added on, and that's £450 a year. 
what you get if you sign up is we do a training session with you which is two hours online through teams like everything is these days but that will actually take you through how you set up give you access to all the lesson plans and materials obviously switch on the pathway planner for you um, show you how to get access to all the reports and how to complete the data sharing agreement you also become part of a membership group, a user group, where we're trying to share ideas about how we can make this even better and what works really well in different contexts. So please do uh, get in touch. We have got a stand here today if anybody wants to come along and have a chat to us. And that's the Career Pilot Stand. Okay, and if you want to find out more about the Pathway Planner, just go to the Advisor Zone. There's a whole tile about it there. Okay, so any questions, I think we're going to pick those up at the end. Um, we also got a helpline which is available from 9 to 3 in term time and during the helpline will field any questions and pass them back to me if, if required. But you can get in touch with me directly if you'd like to. So thank you so much for listening.